Um, I'm going to talk to you about my science fashion story, which is really a mixture of uh, science and fashion and very much inspired by science fiction um, and undertones of insects, and I'll lead you through that as I, as I presented. But I very much wanted to sort of tell you that I, I started off in Cambridge, I grew up here, hated science technology, absolutely hated the whole kind of Cambridge thing, left to go to art school and, and have come back 20 years later to kind of prom uh, to work with the science and technology and I'm, I'm, I'm now at the Institute of Biotech uh, working with Professor Lowe. I wanted to start off with this quote from Ballard. <coughs> so a lot of my uh, work is inspired by science fiction. He said, in uh, fashion is the recognition that nature has supplied us with one skin too few, that a fully sentient being should wear its nervous system externally. So the idea here, here is, is, is developing uh, living fabrics, uh, smart fabrics. So I have a PhD from the Royal College of Art um, and, a, and my first degree in fashion communication. So it's really looking at new ways of, of creating this extra second skin on, on clothing. Um, and uh, one of my projects is called Freebie, and I thought I'd start off with this because it's uh, to change the life, life of sentient beings, and I, I've spelt it sentient beings in that way because uh, my work is very much about delivering scent, um, but it's also for sentient beings, but also for, for, for women and men. And, and Freebie was a perfume that was very much focused on honey um, to, to, uh, to help communicate and, and, and for um, to building sort of confidence. Um, and then I wanted to also talk about this quote here, which is from Thierry Mugler. Um, he said tw nearly 30 years ago, he's a big designer that la launched Angel Perfume and is very much known for his cyborg, um, futuristic fashion. He said, fashion will change dramatically in the years to come. It will be more human, closer to the needs of the people in terms of their being and well-being and not well-showing. Now, this was 29 years ago, and I mean, he's been working on sort of cyborg and um, very sort of high, high fashion and dressing pop stars. But I've, um, I, I'm married to the, the menswear designer, and so he's very much introduced me to science fiction. And this has really got me on the road to science, fusing science with uh, healthcare. Um, this was my first project, fashion communication. So I um, looked at, was trying to find a way of, of bringing more emotion into fashion and communication. And I created this pop-up book, which was um, uh, a multi-sensory book that sort of popped up and had microchips and made lots of strange noises. But it, I wanted to find a way of delivering scent in books and, and clothing, which led me on my way to, um, into, to fashion. Um, and then I also worked as a stylist, um, working very much with um, sort of fashion as wonder. So my book was called Wonder. But looking at ways of, of, uh, of, of, of styling with, with certain items of clothing that um, very much focused on sort of ma magical weaponry. And that's when I got introduced to wearable technology um, and, and building sort of clothing that could uh, have sort of superpowers and super stamina. So that's where the Wonder Woman came from. And this is really the idea that I'm here to talk to you about. Um, it, this is what I'm doing at the Institute of Biotech and at Central St. Martins. And it's really fusing these three areas together of fashion, jewelry, wearable technology. With technology, this is the Cambridge aspect. So here I am in Cambridge working with printing technologies, microfluidics, lab on a chip, um, inkjet, and then fusing it with the, the sense of smell, aromacology, which is the, the science, aroma, aromacology is the science of, of scent. So that's, <laughs> gosh, is it? Sounds like the sea. <laughs> anyway, so it's fusing it with aromacology. So that's really building in this, this um, the sense of smell and how this can help with um, uh, wearable technology. So I'm based at Central St. Martins. I thought I'd show you this picture. This is what Central St. Martins is moving uh, in September to that, this year to King's Cross. So when you arrive into London on platform 10B, I think it is, if you look to your right, you will see the granary. So this is Central St. Martins. Um, and the idea here is that it's sort of the gateway to Cambridge. Obviously, that's what I'm working in Cambridge and hoping to sort of um, develop ties between the two. Um, just a quick flash at my background. I'm related to the Lever family. My, my great-great-grandfather um, started a printing company, so that's where I'm in, interested in the whole printing and packaging. Um, and it, it, there actually was a branch in Cambridge in, uh, in the 50s and 60s. And he was married to Mary Lever, who was the uh, sister of the first Lord Leverhulme. So what I'm trying to do, this is the 19th century, is, is fuse these two together, bring it together in the 21st century to create this new discipline of, of, of sensory design. So to give you a, a quick snapshot of the neuroscience, we all know that scent is very evocative, that one of the least researched of the senses, but it's the, it's the hotline to the brain. Um, and it's very much where the limbic system that controls um, appetite, um, libido, emotion, 
Um, so it has a, a access to your feelings and, and dislikes and likes. Um, but it also has a sort of very um, important effect on mood, which is why um, what I'm doing with my scent is embedding it into clothing and jewellery so that it can have a sort of impact on mood swings, which is this, this mood here, but it can also reduce heart rate, performance-related stress, and balance the nervous system. So the, the idea here is that we're having scent that can really sort of make it have an impact on, on, our, on our mood. Um, just to give you some statistics, we all know that mental health is a major problem in the UK, um, and it's particularly England uh, has one of the highest problems of emotional and psychological effects. One in four have a mental health problem, sleep problems, depression, postnatal depression. I put my hand up for a few of these, having experience in insomnia and postnatal depression. Um, but what I'm trying to do here with my technology and my ideas is very much to complement taking orthodox treatments such as antidepressants and, and sleeping pills. It's very much complementing that. It's not an alternative method. This was my uh, PhD collection at the uh, Royal College of Art called the Wellness Collection. And here I was looking at fusing colour and scent um, and how these correspond together. Um, and the idea here is that it was a, deliver a smart fabric. So it's a, a delivery of, of uh, liquids that's around a sort of fabric, delivering aromatherapy, you know, lavender that could be purple, lemon that could be a, a kind of um, a, a citrus scent. Um, but it's really targeting the emotional scent. So what, from there, I've, it's moved on into, into various clothes that I've made. This was with a designer in Paris called Adeline Andre, called Smart Second Skin. Um, and uh, the idea here is that it, it has different scents in, inside the yarns, um, and uh, it works in this installation, and you can deliver scents depending on your mood, if you're feeling stressed or anxious or you can't sleep. Um, and just to show how it works, it's, it's, it's kind of based on the MIT Media Lab research effective computing. So in the clothing and the jewellery, you would have a stimulus. You'd have some kind of timer or biometric sensor that would pick up on how you're feeling, if you're feeling anxious or um, excitable or whatever it might be. It would release a, a fragrance, and then you'd have this kind of response, whether it's emotional, psychological, or, or physiological. Um, and then talking about my insects and, and how insects have, uh, have inspired the work, um, this was a, an, a project that was called Sent by a Wireless Web that was uh, based on bobadier beetles that uh, have a kind of um, defense mechanism in, the, in their rear end that can explode these hot gases. Um, and here he, you see this model here. She's wearing a, 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 an item of jewelry that actually dispenses the scent. So she's got the jitters. She's feeling anxious. It then picks up on her mood, delivers this aura of, of calming scent to kind of make her feel better. So that's the general gist of, of how it works. Um, so, I think it's very important to sort of mention that this is, this is a, the delivery is very kind of um, non-invasive. Um, in, so, it's, we all know that scent can be very intrusive. Uh, it, so, it's, it's delivering this sort of ready breath glow around people. And it's, it's uh, a, a, kinder to the skin because you don't need to have solvents and it's sort of, um, less intrusive in that way. Um, here we have the, the bubble of reality. The idea here is that you can have, you can program your own sense depending on your mood. Um, so if you're feeling stressed or, or, or re relaxed, so you have, this is not actually meant to be bubble gum, but it's the idea here of, <laughs> you could have your own um, personalized scent in your clothing depending how you're fe feeling, which goes with this increase of well-being trends at the moment. Um, and then I'm, gonna, I'm kind of just to talk through a few applications and how it could help with, for example, postnatal depression. Uh, we know that the scent of the newborn baby crown has a very, very special smell that can calm the mother, but you can have certain scents just to calm the mother or, or the baby, help you sleep, obviously. I'm working on a project here in Cambridge with Philips Research, a knowledge transfer fellowship, looking at ways of, of um, you, you know, how, how, how certain fragrances can help sleep, but also for some menopause as well. This is a project that I'm very, very working on at the moment, which is the scent clock. So you have a kind of clock that's embedded inside in, 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 your, in your clothing or your jewellery or whatever it might be that would be programmed to deliver a scent depending on the time of the day, something to wake you up in the morning, something to help you sleep at night. But it can also sort of work with uh, if you're flying jet lag and, and uh, programming your, your body clock. Um, it could also work with a sort of memory, um, but also there's, there's, certain, there's certain research, there's not enough research yet to actually quantify it, but certain fragrances can actually uh, curb the appetite, or it could be used to help people with Alzheimer's to kind of trigger memories and to help them to um, enhance memories from the past. What I'm hoping to 
to do in the future is work with electronic nose. So this is very futuristic stuff. The idea being here that it's based on um, uh, uh, the, the sense of smell with dogs and how they can detect uh, early stage cancer in lung. So if you had sort of electronic nose sensors that could um, detect if you have uh, um, lung cancer or breast cancer. But, um, so this is sort of things for the, proje for the projects for the future, but this is very much what I'm, I'm hoping to move into. Um, and then back to my Wonder Woman and my uh, insects and empowerment. Um, but having, having, having kind of jewellery and clothing could, that could actually, uh, indestructible but, uh, clothing that could actually sort of deter muggers or whatever. <laughs> but there are certain fragrances, believe it or not, in, uh, the, in, in the US, uh, Monel, uh, that are working on fragrances that can actually induce vomit, vomiting. So you could actually, you know, squirt somebody with some kind of, of scent that would uh, de de destabilise them. This is my party sense, um, the idea being here that you could uh, have some sort of clothing that's, you know, just, just for yourself, it's not really to seduce anyone at this stage. Um, but <laughs> and then you're in a nightclub and you'd have Barry White and it's a pheromone, so you'd have something to be a bit more sexy. And then it's the end of the night, you've been raving, you just want to crash out and have some lavender, to chill out. But this graph gives you an idea of the traditional fragrance and how we apply it in the morning. Um, you know, it wears off straight away. But if you had a sensor system that's in your clothing, you could actually program it. So I thought I'd actually end. We're talking about pheromones. It was Valentine's Day yesterday. The idea of having a, here's the love is in the air and how you could actually, you know, um, you could use pheromones. It's not really my area. I'm really working on fragrances, but uh, just to give you an idea how it sort of enhances life. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs>